Hello, Mark. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Come on. What is the policy of TV3 when it comes to covering general elections? I mean, do you have any specific policy that you adhere to? Uh, our policy is to always look for the news angles, to look for the news stories during the campaign, and that sets the agenda. We're not so interested in giving everybody five minutes each or scaling down compared to their percentages. If Peter Dunn comes up with a good story uh, that is resonating with the electorate, then he can lead the bulletin and get the most time on that story. So that tends to be our policy, is to try and apply traditional news values to the campaign. What is the credibility factor of TV3 among the masses of New Zealand from your organization's perspective? I th well, I think the credibility of our news when it comes to politics is very, very high because we're independent. We're not owned by the government. We don't answer to anybody. Uh, we have total independence from our own management as well. I'm the editor-in-chief and I'm the sole decider of whether something will run or not, obviously in, in communication or in uh, discussion with my senior producers and political editor. But we're beholding to nobody and we have no likeness or fondness for any of the political parties. We treat them all the same and from our point of view, everybody will also get a very, very fair go. Mm -hmm. Then, in the scenario of uh, the unfolding events that have uh, happened uh, surrounding the televised debates, then how come you know some outside factors have dictated uh, and impressed upon the decisions at your end? Um, well, I wasn't prepared, as you know, to hold a non-debate, and this is what it was going to be—a non-debate. We can only invite people on. We can't compel anybody to appear. We're, we're, we're not a court. Um, we're simply a, a broadcaster. We invited all the leaders. The two main leaders declined. It wasn't going to be a debate, therefore, so it wasn't viable to hold it. Now, some of the minor party leaders have jumped up and, up and down about us cancelling this debate on commercial grounds, that we did it for money. And I have to keep correcting them, and I think it's poor form of them to continue down this line when they know that this is not true. We haven't cancelled this debate because of money or commercial reasons. We cancelled it because it would be insulting to the viewer, basically, to have some sort of debate without the main party leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, we have other ways of um, allowing the smaller parties to put their message to the electorate and they'll run out um, over the next month. Mm -hmm. And what sort of series are, are you planning, uh, anything in specific? From October the 14th, that's Tuesday, Campbell Live is going to host a series of interviews with the minor party leaders. The first one is with Winston Peters, um, the leader of New Zealand First, uh, our longest serving politician and that'll be followed by the Greens uh, and the other smaller parties. My own belief is that the public will get a much better chance with John talking to them about their policies than they would have in some cross-party minor debate. Uh, I think this, this will be very good for the minor party leaders and hopefully it will stop them sounding off about uh, this debate being cancelled. Um, yes, I, I think it'll be good to watch. What does it hope to achieve in terms of aspirations, set goals in discharging its responsibilities of being a public watchdog? Well, we do take our role as the fourth estate very seriously. And, and if you look at um, Duncan Garner, our political editor, uh, he is always challenging everything that the politicians say, um, always pushing for the truth, and that is how, that is how we look at our role uh, as a new service in New Zealand society. We want the truth. Um, you, you know, there's a story that's running at the moment, uh, these secret tapes that are, that are coming out. Now, the National Party does not like us putting these to air, but we see it as the viewer's job to make up their mind. We have these tapes, 
we play them and it's the viewer's job. So that's our view of taking, if you like, our responsibility. We're not trying to put spin across things. Um, Duncan does try to analyse things as to whether he thinks uh, uh, if this is a good move politically, a poor move politically, etc. But really, it's the viewers that get to make up their minds about these things. So, yes, we do take our public responsibility seriously, but that doesn't extend to bowing down to cries from politicians. And when the minor party leaders jump up and down and carry on like that, um, I don't take any notice of it, really. Mm -hmm. So, just a while back, you mentioned about uh, politicians crying down uh, TV3 or any yes. other organization. Have you encountered that sort of uh, behavior from the politicians? Yes, it happens just about every election period. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you know, I can understand why, because the stakes are so high for them and the minor parties do get starved of oxygen during the campaign because even though we have MMP, our political system is still dominated in many ways by the two major parties. Mm -hmm. And of course, those two leaders, um, and it, it's interesting that the minor parties do not seem to attack them with the same vigour that they attack the broadcasters, but the leaders of those two parties were the ones who refused to debate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me or TV3, it was John Key and Helen Clark. Um, and you know, when they call us um, craven and, and uh, you know, succumbing to bullying, that's nonsense. Um, you know, they ought to address those issues to John Key and Helen Clark, not me. Can you name any particular political leader that has uh, been uh, vocal and strong in airing their displeasure? In terms of the minor party debate? In, in terms of the major parties who are political entities that are trying to uh, stifle and dictate TV3's decision-making process. I think they. I think all political leaders try to manipulate the system as, mu as much as they can to try and spin it their way. The bigger parties, of course, have the benefit of having a whole lot of staff and spin doctors, and it's not so much uh, Key and Clark that are dirtying their hands with this. It's often their um, uh, their press secretaries, their media secretaries, who are doing the work for them. Um, but they all, all have a go from time to time. Um, but during election campaigns, because the stakes are so high, the, the yelping gets louder, and they all do it. I wouldn't really single any one of them out. Uh, they're all at it, really.